Here you're going to get a great introduction to the plants of New England. You'll get a broad overview of the diversity of plants in our region and the major reasons why our flora is quite diverse in species. But let's start with a question. How many species of plants do you think there are in all of New England? Take a wild guess. I'll give you some time. How many did you guess? Well, there are about 3,500 species of plants in New England. That includes subspecies and varieties. And some parts of New England are richer in species than others, such as this moist sugar maple forest in western Massachusetts. If you look hard at this photo, and I'll give you a little time, you might be able to notice as many as 10 plant species just in this small area. New England's plant diversity is similar to other areas of the U.S. of comparable size and latitude, like New York State, Missouri, and Washington State. This is pretty impressive, considering how densely settled and urbanized New England is, especially Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. The orange, pink, and red areas on this map of the U.S. have 100 to 1,000 people per square mile. That doesn't leave a whole lot of room for plants. Most of New York, outside the city of course, Missouri and Washington State are much less heavily populated. Although even sparsely populated agricultural areas have profoundly changed the amount of natural habitat, such as prairie, available for native plants. In past classes, we've been looking in more detail at some of the major groups of plants, from woody plants to ferns to orchids. Now, if you've played with Go Botany to try and classify some plants that interest you into one of these broad groups, you might be curious about the number of species that actually belong to each group. You'll see that the lion's share of plants belong to the class of non-woody, herbaceous, dicot plants. Woody plants and grass-like plants are pretty rich in species, too. Now here are the actual numbers of species. A whopping 1,899 species of those herbaceous dicots, and nearly 700 species of woody plants, including trees and shrubs. Did any of those numbers surprise you? Think about it. Many folks might be surprised at the number of orchid species in our region. 59. Many of us are familiar with the pink lady slipper orchid, one of our most common and showy orchids that inhabits piney woodlands. Many people wonder if this spectacular plant is endangered. Fortunately, at least for now, it's pretty common. Still, we recommend you never pick it. The flowers wither quite quickly, and it does not take well to transplanting. But there are 58 other orchid species inhabiting our woodlands and wetlands, some exceptionally charismatic, like this yellow lady slipper. So why is New England so diverse in plant species? There are a lot of species whose heart of range lies south or north of New England that meet their range limits in New England. Boreal species from colder climates in Canada extend into the higher elevations and cold spots in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Warm adapted species from the mid-Atlantic states extend into places like Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and southern Connecticut and Rhode Island. This map shows the ecoregions that characterize New England, of which there are quite a few. So what is an ecoregion exactly? 
Well, ecologists tend to define an ecoregion as a geographical area that has distinct groups of plant and animal species that are adapted to the unique geology, uh, physiography, and what we mean by that is elevational gradients, the climate, the hydrology, that is the water systems, and the soils of that area. And we've divvied up the entire world into particular areas that share these characteristics and that host quite predictable suites of plant and animal species. So we note that New England has several different ecoregions within its borders, including cold northern ecoregions and warmer southern ecoregions. And we see variation in environmental conditions, particularly climate, which is very sensitive to elevation or altitude. Now, we don't have the Rockies here, but we do have some high mountains above 5,000 feet, including our highest peak, Mount Washington in New Hampshire, which has some of the Earth's most extreme weather. In 1934, Mount Washington recorded the then highest wind gust ever recorded at 231 miles per hour, a record only broken by Alaska at high elevation in 1996. On our highest peaks, winter temperatures are frigid, and summer temperatures can bring snow at any time. In contrast, temperatures and weather at sea level are much milder, in part due to what's called the maritime effect. The nearby presence of the sea tends to calm variation in temperature. It's slow to warm during the spring and also slow to cool during the winter. That's because the huge volume of water in the sea nearby soaks up and stores current temperatures for a long lag time. Continental or inland climates can be a bit more variable because they lack the storage capacity of large bodies of water. Exceptions include uh, Lake Champlain in Vermont, which is a large water body that can create a more equitable climate for nearby communities, such as Burlington, Vermont. Finally, the bedrock that underlies New, New England is very, very diverse. And this influences the chemistry of soils and also the topography on which plants grow. You don't have to understand what all of the different colors on this detailed map show. Simply appreciate the fact that New England is a very diverse mosaic of bedrock types wrought by many geological upheavals during our long 650 million year old history. You can learn more about this in our second course, Deeper into the Green World. Intrigued? Let's get a little deeper into the types of plants that inhabit New England.